Shall we begin? Let's begin. I want to let you guys know this is your last week to enter for the contest to win a Nezuko figurine. I'll be announcing the winner by this recording by this at the end of this week on the weekend and all you have to do to enter to win is put your down hashtag your favorite demon slayer character it could be from the manga or the anime and also hit subscribe of course as the biggest thing and like any of my demon slayer videos and you have a chance to win this the awesome nezuko figurine so let's uh get into it wow um wow <laughs> you had the first half, you know, you had the, I, you would call it a recap of the Mugen Train arc. Uh, you had the film that came out. And if you've seen the film, you, you honestly didn't need to watch the first half of the season. I mean, for me, I hate when uh, anime does this. The biggest example is when Dragon Ball Super redid the uh, Golden Frieza arc. And, you know, or the, I should say the Return of Frieza and we've seen it, or the Battle of the Gods, and they did in the anime series. Uh, it's, you know, you've seen it before. Why would you want to watch something again that's a slightly different? And even though the the fight between, uh, of course, uh, was it Akaba or uh, Upper Moon versus Rengoku, and Rengoku is like the highlight of that first half. I think it's kind of a slower pace first half. There's a lot of good things about it. You really kind of get the sense of how pure Tanjiro is. I think Zenetsu does have a nice, nice little moment, especially res rescuing uh, Nezuko. And Nezuko has a nice little moment. Of course, in uh, Inosuke, if you've seen the film, he has a great, great moment too. But in the series, you know, it's once again. I, but I think, <coughs> excuse me, I still think they take a little bit of a seat back compared to like the second season. I think... It's more kind of like Tundro and definitely Rengoku. And you have to really got to kind of press on Rengoku because as a Hashirama, he's only there for so long. And it kind of sucks because I, that's what was my only gripe or uh, well, one of my gripes with the film was like, damn, like Rengoku is such such an awesome character and I'm getting to know him. Uh, and then he has this epic battle at the end and it's absolutely stunning. One of the best anime battles I've ever seen in my life. Yet, we don't spend a lot of time with him, and we do get glimpses of his um, past story, his story before, but I wanted, you know, I wanted a little, I wanted more Ren, Ren Goku, I wanted him at least to go one more arc and then, you know, kill him off, but of course that can't be, because we're following the manga, so, uh, but Ren Goku is the highlight of that first half, and of course Tanjiro, and I do love, I think what Demon Slayer, I've always said it in all my reviews and stuff, is that the the beauty about Demon Slayer is they're able to really tug your heartstrings. I haven't seen this happen since Gurren Lagann, uh, some moments of Naruto, uh, also, of course, Full Metal Alchemist with the family aspect of things. It's just like Gurren Lagann, even though Simon and Kamina in that series are not blood brothers, they are brothers in arms, brothers, you know, they've grown up with each other. What's so great about the Mugen Train Art is that they showcase a lot of like, you know, they're still hurting. Tanjiro, Nezuko is still hurting. When Tanjiro is asleep, he's, you know, he, this is the, he wants this to be reality. He wants to be with his family again, you know. He did, even though they weren't the most riches or whatever, they had a good life. They all cared for each other and he deeply misses that. What Demon Slayer is good at is showcasing that like us as humanity as humans i'm pretty sure you lost a loved one any any one of us and we reflect and we miss and we uh we all handle it a different way and that's what demon slayer is able to do is really bring that into the forefront into the show that's what makes this show so special is because when you have moments like this when you have beautiful animation uh character setup care uh this overall moment happening with the beautiful music it really brings an impact and it really makes you reflect and you really touch upon it you really feel it and because it's not fake it's all that it's realistic emotion in an animated show because it's just presented so perfectly you could you could um you could absolutely relate to it and that's what i love about demon slayer and throughout these uh, couple of seasons. Now, with the Mugen Train, the, the thing I really had a gripe about was the uh, first, uh, the Lower Moon villain, and uh, oh God, just really 
very over the top animated and you could say the second half when we're going to get to that in a moment with the uh with the brother and sister and the brother being a little bit playing with his food so to speak these these demons play with their food they they don't just go right to the throat and that's kind of you know i i just don't it, it's it's there for the story to keep going and things to happen but sometimes it's a little bit overboard so that's the problem i have with the lower moon in the um in the first half of the demon slayer but going to back to rengoku you know that it's probably one of the best like pharaohs endings um not necessarily when rengoku's giving encouraging words to the boys but i think what really hits me is when he sees his mother and when he's about to pass and he gets his big smile and i i kind of reflect that as kind of like trigon when uh nicholas wolf uh was it wolf wood he's one of my favorite characters and he kind of reflects on this he like it's a little bit different contrast because he doesn't want to die and he's telling you know he wants to live but they both like kind of die kind of standing you know with with the acceptance of it all and reflecting on a lot of their past and what's going on in the present and kind of you know just really kind of passing the torch a little bit but <clears throat> the uh the Rengoku death is beautifully done, and also Ace, Ace from One Piece was a uh, uh, was another one that kind of was very similar to Rengoku. But Demon Slayer is doing a great job of doing that, of presenting death and really making it very memorable, not only for the humans but for the demons. That's real. That's what I love about this series is haven't strayed away from that. Tundro is very much still in both sides. So the second half of Demon Slayer, the entertainment arc, is by far, in my opinion, the superior out of the two. Um, I absolutely love the entertainment arc. Uh, I think uh, Tenjin is not as great as Rengoku, of course. He has his faults, but he has like a lot of great traits from him. He's a shinobi. Uh, he has three wives, which if the only gripe I have about the uh, entertainment arc is the three wives kind of do nothing. They're, they're robust, they're busty, you know, they're, they're typical anime women, uh, they have uh, typical anime traits, one's like, you know, cries a lot, one's is like stern with the other one, one is very innocent, pure, um, is always looking after, kind of like the mother figure of everybody, but there's one part, there's one particular scene when they're all battling and they're just kind of standing around and I get, they rescue a lot of people, they get everybody out of that area, but then they have time to really kind of watch uh, Tenjin go at it and they could help him but they don't and I know one's injured or one's poisoned but it just didn't make any sense to me like they're just really just standing there and yeah they could have definitely been used a lot better that's the one critique I have is if you're going to have these characters just don't have them for looks and you know comedy aspects to it use them and the series has been able to use a lot of these characters they present but I just really think they dropped the ball on Tenjin's wives. But the comedy is there. The one gripe I always have with anime is the comedy is so childish and so forced sometimes. It's not funny. But with the entertainment arc, it is hilarious, man. I, I really laughed, generally. Especially the uh, episodes where Zanetsu and Osuke and Tundra have to pose to get into these households as girls. And it's absolutely hysterical you absolutely know what's going to happen to onosuke and you know he's the prettiest out of all of them uh tenjin you know gives uh, tenjin and zanetsu's little back and forth banter is great like the comedy is really really good in the second half i think the only time it kind of misses is a little bit towards I, I would say a little bit of the finale we didn't really need a little comedic effect in the finale you could still be a little bit serious or genuine or uh, tender but they they still uh they still it still it still works i mean it's just not as uh, funny as early on episodes where it's kind of like not forced it's it's rightfully so the comedy should happen right here and it flows really good um the animation man on both both sides both part one and part two demon slayer has still been able to blow me away with the animation. There is a reason why people are watching this is because the love and care. And this is what I was worried about going into season two. Is this going to be a little bit of a drop off in season one? Are we still going to get the same animation? You know, the same, um, this thing is making a lot of money. Are they going to go the cheap route? Are they actually going to continue to really put some effort and love into this? 
And I will still have those questions going into season three because, I mean, you saw Attack on Titan. You know, they changed studios. You know, a lot of people are hit and miss. Uh, you see, you see anime series sometimes they go a different route. Like I think for the good part though, like Bleach, Bleach in the beginning was oh, was pretty good, but it's just gotten better over the years. And I think Demon Slayer has done a fantastic job of just keeping that balance. The music is phenomenal. You must get the OST whenever you can with Demon Slayer. I think the music is really it's kind of like John Williams, really per, like just bringing the project up higher with the music choices i think a lot of people will say well music that's a sad excuse using music to elevate your series but it's not it is part of the process you just like lighting's part of it just like acting's part of it music is part of the process of making something that is good even greater so i think the music is phenomenal once again uh this is kind of crazy like some of the parts in there you know it takes me aback sometimes because sometimes i'm just watching kind of like a battle it seems like shonen where i'm seeing like a, you know naruto in my eyes on one piece but then there's like the demons you know are eating people there's really crazy deaths there's uh decapitation there is there is violence in here which brings me back into it because you know i sometimes forget because of like you know tundro and the crew and how they act and how they are you kind of forget that, you know, there is brutality in the series. And I think that's, it's a great balance. Like you can have fun, energy, not in battles without too much violence. But when you do include that and you do it, include it a little, kind of little as possible, it really kind of takes you back like, whoa, that was a, that was a crazy moment. There's a upper moon or a, a upper, yeah, I think an upper moon demon that's get introdu introduced towards the finale and he has a body part. He's eating a body part. He has a head. Like, it kind of just blows my mind. Like, holy crap. Like, <laughs> there's blood in this. You know, there's really there's really graphic detail in here. There's really graphic imagery in here, which is phenomenal. Um, the villains in this second, in the entertainment arc, are so much better. Better. I love Daki. I love uh, Gintaro. The brother and sister dynamic reflecting, you know, Nezuko and Tundro and like if they were to become demons, uh, really hits home in the finale on their backstory. The backstory is really great, man. That's what I love about the series. What I'm saying is that there's two, there's two and there's two sides of a coin, right? Uh, there is some good yet so much evil that these two have presented. I love Tundro's speech to them, like. Yeah, you you are killers. You'll never be forgiven. This and that, but you have each other, and you guys must remain having each other. But you will never be forgiven for the crimes you have done. That's what I love about Tundra as a protagonist is he understands these are killers. They're merciless. Why would I show them any mercy? But yet, I have you know. Yet I'm just too pure of heart to not show some sympathy and compassion towards these guys. Even with all the murders they had, uh, all the killings they did, because at one point they weren't demons. And it's kind of like what Demon Slayer is doing is they're presenting these demons like you're seeing the grown up side, you're seeing the evil side that they, you know, started off as with poverty. They had only each other, you know, the mother was abusive to her son. So you saw the world, you saw everything. You saw everything eat them and spin them out. And when they had some power, they took advantage and they absolutely went off the rails. And what it reminds me of is a lot of these demons and how a demon slayer is presenting it. The philosophy wise is that it's kind of like a baby, right? You come into this world innocent until you become a monster. And that's kind of what a lot of these demons are. They come into this world innocent. Everybody comes innocent. And at some point down the line, whether it be the surroundings, the hardships, whatever, most of the time it is kind of like that. And that's kind of go reflects in everyday life too, depending on, you know, who, how you grew up and where you grew up and <clears throat> all the hardships you had to overcome you know, a lot, a big percentage don't go the nice, you know, white knight kind of route. So <clears throat> how a lot of these uh, demons kind of remind me of is the, yeah, they started off innocent and then they became 
evil. And that's how Daki and Gotaro kind of came to be. And, uh, but there, it's, that's what I love about it, man. I, I, at first, I did not like Gotaro's design. He was an ugly, ugly uh, animation, like an ugly design. He was very thin. But then learning the backstory on the finale, it just puts a whole new perspective. And then with Daki, Daki was a beat. Like, she was just like, you know, I kind of like, you know, a mustache twirling villain done the right way. And that's kind of what she was. Um, and then her philosophy of them being ugly, but then the finale really brings everything together and really you understand why they're kind of like that and why they think of people as either ugly or beautiful and why they hate, uh, pretty much kind of either one, but like you understand the finale really brings everything together. So from beginning to end on this entertainment arc, it really came full circle. It really... I, there's critiques in there, yes, like I said, um, I, but I think, like, they came to play. I think Onosuke has some great moments in here, man, uh, funny moments, too. Um, I think uh, when he, he really was, like, the star of the show, when he had Daki's head, and he's, like, laughing, and he's, like, oh, and, you know, he's he's coming up with, kind of with a plan, Tundro's following the plan, and Tundro, man, Tundro, you thought the first half... He, you cut the first half showcase his innocent pureness and, you know, his goal to get Nessie go back to human, but here you show his relentless, his stubbornness to die. Uh, this dude really was jacked up in the second half, and I loved it. We want our protagonist to really try to overcome <coughs> a lot of obstacles, especially when he can't reach that full potential and he's and it's realistic that he's not gonna go full on, you know, nine tails. The dude is he's still training. He he goes pretty far, but he's just, just not far enough. He needs help. That's what I love about Tundro is he needs help. It's a team anime. Zanetsu asleep. My boy Zanetsu gets <coughs> so much shine in this in this one man i loved it even though he has only one move he's still working with that one move he's delivering he's laying the final blow baby and nezuko man when nezuko turned full demon everybody was talking about that and then learning about her power her pretty much her abilities to heal uh to get rid of poison and use some of that demon uh, abilities that she hasn't had before was great too i mean it might, it's kind of a cop out a little bit but I, i'll i'll go with it i thought t- tension should have probably passed but knowing his kind of a little bit of his backstory too and that's another kind of weak point is that tension is just not as interesting as rengoku and i think a lot of people uh, a lot of that is rengoku is a little bit more of rengoku is just a better overall kind of like you you really relate to him more, I believe, and you just really like him more than Tension. But don't get me wrong, I like Tension too. Tension was a badass in here, and I love his spectacular attacks throughout the the fight too. And the fighting was amazing. The animation was amazing. Muzan, you know, showcases here and there, but you don't really need the big bad villain because you had really strong villains in the second entertainment arc act, and of course in the in the first. Uh, part as well at the end Akaba or Kaza or whatever his name is he he was just the the pure strength and his enjoyment of taking out Rengoku and him wanting to turn him to a demon that was so fascinating and here too uh, Tundro gets offered to be turned into a demon and then he kind of runs and books it and I'm kind of like oh damn that's Tundro's I mean I don't feel I, I I don't blame him but him having a plan to take out uh take out these guys was uh was a great kind of like uh Mis- misled me a little bit so demon slayer season two is everything i wanted man i mean uh i thought i think the train of mugon movie i'd rather just kind of watch that if i were to go back to that arc but i don't think i would go back to the arc honestly i think i would go to the entertainment arc or the en- entertainment district arc i think it's just a superior arc it's more fun uh it flows better uh, you, you're, it's, it's kind of, it's not necessarily mysterious. You know that, you know, there's a demon and it, you, you know what they're trying to do, but when you get to where they're about to, you know, do battle with Daki and then goes on from there, it just becomes more entertaining and entertaining because the fights are so good in this series. Of course, they leave it at cliffhanger every episode, but now that you could binge it 
it's so worth going back to. There was many times where I'm just like, I got to go back and watch that episode because it was that damn good. Because it was that damn good. Even the slower moments are that great. The comedic moments works. So um, putting the two arcs together, a solid, solid season. I would give it a 9 out of 10. Like, I love Demon Slayer Season 2 just as much as I love Demon Slayer Season 1. And I look forward to Demon Slayer Season 3. So, my favorite is still... Ton- uh, well, my favorite is Kanao. You'll see why. Uh, my favorite is still Tanj- uh, or One of my favorite protagonists is still Tanjiro. Tanjiro really shines in this. But I'm glad the boys get more shine in this too. It seems like it's a kind of a balancing act and everybody's getting their moments. So I'm absolutely looking forward to more future Demon Slayer stuff. But what did you guys think about Demon Slayer Season 2? Did you guys love it? I know a lot of people love this uh, season, I and especially me. Um, like I said, you guys... Uh, good luck on the Nezuko figurine, the giveaway. Uh, I will announce the winner at the end of the week. And I'm Dan American Dan Sun. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and like the video. And let me know your thoughts on Demon Slayer Season 2. So that's my review, guys. You guys have a good one. Bye-bye.